this, these steps are, are usually pretty confusing to um, people who aren't familiar with uh, Kerberos, how it, how it takes place. And uh, we don't necessarily, you know, know that it's going on because we're just, we log in and we access the necessary resources. But Kerberos is, you know, quite popular. It's the uh, default authentication protocol for uh, Windows. It's been used in, in Unix for a long time. So it's been around, it's, it's, um, but a lot of people don't understand necessarily the steps. Now for the exam, you'll need to know uh, KDC, TGS, TGT, um, principles, realm. You can get a, a, a question on what the authenticator is. What, what is that for? And, and in the authenticator, like I said, there, there's um, like a sequence number and a timestamp to ensure that there's no replay attacks. That means that somebody can't grab that ticket and submit it and act as though they're me and authenticate to that uh, other principal as myself. This, the Kerberos is an open protocol, which means that different vendors can uh, take the protocol and manipulate it as they wish. So they, get, they can get the code and they can manipulate it to work within their, you know, their servers, their environments. So that's why we actually have different flavors of uh, Kerberos and not all versions of Kerberos are, are interoperable because the vendors uh, modify them for their specific products. So we've covered the authenticators. It's used for authentication and um, we need to know why we're even using Kerberos because a lot of people um, in my classes when I go through all of these steps they seem very uh, complex and I get a lot of questions of why do all of this? And in reality this is how a lot of protocols are working in the background. Again this is a single sign-on technology. Remember that I had um, signed on one time I put my username and password in once, and, and I didn't have to authenticate again. There was tickets being granted to me, um, to my system, that allowed me to communicate with other principals. So that's why we're talking about it. It's a single sign-on technology, and those tickets have a lifetime. Like the, when I uh, authenticate to the authentication service, the ticket that comes back to me has a lifetime that the network administrator sets which is usually about eight to ten hours because that's how long somebody's going to be um, at work. So th those tickets have lifetimes. The second ticket is only used uh, during that session. So if I need to print um, something else, let's say ten minutes later, I have to go through all those steps again. Get a ticket from the TGS, you know, do the whole session key, authenticator dance. Um, so those are created for each session. Uh, that principals need to communicate. So that again, you know, there's, uh, when I go through this, a lot of people think it's nuts, you know, why I go through all of this just to be able to print something. But there's just as much confusion or, or just as much complexity to any other type of authentication protocol. We just usually don't know what's happening in the background. We usually could just log on and uh, uh, do our work and not really understand the complexity that's going on under the covers.